so I'm out here today harvesting this basil plant. I have a few other things that I need to harvest as well. I have a sage plant over here, um, this basil plant. I might got, grab some time and I thought I would take you along for one of my favorite ways to harvest my herbs, but also how to preserve them in a really efficient way. I was spending a lot of money on freeze dried herbs and I thought maybe we could learn how to freeze dry them ourselves. We'll go over a few different methods for that. Today, right now, I'm harvesting them and I want to show you how to ensure that you get more annuals like basil to come back every single year. Annuals are perennial, depending on how you steward them. And um, then how these plants grow and then we'll dive into the harvesting portion of it. So to really understand basil, you know, when you when you get it at the store, you have this beautiful basil plant, but what a lot of people never get to see is how this plant flourishes. Now, this is the rootstock of a very healthy basil plant. Look how thick and woody this is. It is such a woody plant once it grows. And now this was two plants, and it's very much like a tree almost. Uh, a bush and so this was a very healthy plant now it probably won't come back next year unless we do this we the seeds of basil are in these flowers right here and what I like to do to try and ensure that my basil comes back every year I take this and I will dig a hole down here where these roots are and I will just kind of lay it there and press it into the ground like this Sorry, my camera wasn't doing anything. Some days I will bury it, but for now, I just press it in there. And generally, it'll release those seeds. Now, sage is a little bit different. I generally don't let my sage go to seed um, because it can get really leggy. And I'll show you a sage plant that's kind of leggy in a second. This is typical garden sage. And you can see all the little plants on here, leaves. Uh, my sage generally lasts me through the winter pretty well, but um, to ensure that it doesn't go to seed and comes back every year as a perennial, I just top them off right about here and I'll, I'll preserve those tops. All right, I've got my sage and my basil. I might go grab some other herbs and we're gonna get started on preserving these. All right, so I'm down here in what very may well be our indoor uh, basement kitchen eventually. That's another story for another day. I have the Harvest Right freeze dryer. Now, I have not actually used this. I've had this freeze dryer in complete transparency with you for about a year now, and I have actually not used it at all. This is my first time using it because I wanted to wait. Um, I'm not a huge, like, food prepper. I know all of you guys are so tired of seeing like all, all the prepper stuff with the food freeze drying and I've heard it like constantly just being in the home study community but I got this Harvest Right um, over a year ago before the, the whole affiliate phase and I specifically got this from Harvest Right to show you how to take your apothecary to the next level and the reason was because freeze-dried herbs, if you're an herbalist and you are serious about herbalism, freeze-dried herbs are very, very expensive. You know, I can I can buy a one pound bag of regular dried elderberries for about $12 to $16, depending on the year. Sometimes it goes up to $20. But a pound of freeze-dried organic elderberries can cost me $50 or more dollars because the medicinal value is preserved so much better in a freeze dryer when it comes to herbs than regular dehydration of hanging or just drying out on a mat or even drying a dehydrator. The reason is because there's no heat ever applied to the herbs. Now, it's not saying a crisis situation that your herbs aren't gonna work, not at all. Do you have to have this? 
not at all but why not have something if you're going through herbs now if you're just a, a regular family herbalist that's not into saving your herbs then this isn't beneficial for you it's not going to be cost efficient for you but if you're a serious herbalist and you're not only preserving herbs for yourself but for people in your community and your family this is your best option so this is the ultimate herbalism tool when it comes to herb preservation so this is what we're going to use today this is my first time trying it it's going to be a two-day process it takes 18 to 24 hours to freeze dry herbs depending on the herb so we're going to go ahead and get started So we've already had a couple of frosts and so what I'm doing is I'm going through all of these leaves to see which ones I really want to keep and I'll show you some frost damage here. Do you see these black pieces on this basil? This is from frost damage and I don't really want to keep that because it doesn't have any medicinal value to it. It doesn't hold any medicinal value so I'm just going through and I'm cutting the leaves off and I'm trying a couple of different things since I've never tried this before. I am trying to keep one tray leaves and then multiple trays these little tops and we're going to see how long each one takes to freeze dry because i would really like to know if there's any difference in that or if they freeze dry at about the same rate We're loading it up and you can hear it's a little bit noisy, which is why I have it in my basement, but it's really not that bad. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get it running and we will check back tomorrow on what the results are on the freeze dried herbs. In the meantime, you can check out a link to the Harvest Right freeze dryer and tomorrow we're going to go over some of the health benefits of why you should use one. All right, so freeze drying went really well. Uh, I did learn a couple of things about freeze drying. So one of the mistakes that I made was that I left the herbs in there <clears throat> kind of just to rest overnight after the freeze drying was done. And the freeze dryer actually holds moisture. And so what happened is um, they, they revived themselves. So they were dry, crisp as anything, amazing. But because I left them in there overnight, even though the freeze dryer was not on with the door closed um, because there was still moisture in there they essentially reconstituted as what it would be if you were rehydrating something and so they did that and I had to start another batch all over again but you can get quite a bit of herbs from your freeze dryer um, and from one plant and so I really want to encourage you if you are a serious herbalist okay so freeze dryer I know you guys are tired of seeing all the freeze dryer stuff on YouTube but if you're an herbalist and you're a homesteader it's kind of a no-brainer if you are trying to prep stuff so in order for your freeze dryer to essentially pay for itself you really have to use it this is not one of those tools where you can only use it sometimes. It's something that really has to become a lifestyle. And so what we're finding is that um, adding things to the freeze dryer that are leftovers, that our animals aren't eating, or that we are not re-eating, which is rare, um, goes into the freeze dryer 
and makes then goes into my bags but for me I actually got the freeze dryer not because we always have a lot of leftovers because we really don't um, and when I make food I make food like I'll make a big pot of chicken and chicken broth and then we'll eat off of that the whole week so I don't really ever have a lot of leftovers but the one thing I am gonna do is I have a lot of uh, turkey feet and chicken feet and carcasses from the turkeys and chickens that we butchered this year so I am gonna dehydrate some bone broth One of my favorite things is the bouillon um, it's called better than bouillon you can get organic Let's see um, and it's kind of like a a paste I love this stuff for really quick broth and so I'm gonna kind of try to make my own that's one thing I'll show you in a future video um, or at least powdered broth that tastes similar to this um, and so that's one of the things I'm gonna do because we're gonna have so much bone broth I do want to freeze dry of it dry it whether for a prepper emergency or just to have on hand for this stuff which is amazing um, and then those are the types of things that I'll be using it for and dehydrated milk for dried uh, formula if we ever need it but as an herbalist I got the freeze dryer for my dried herbs um, I really want to make sure my dried herbs last longer and they will when you freeze dry them instead of dehydrate them but the one thing that you should know with freeze drying herbs is that they immediately have to go into the freeze dryer when you harvest them. You can't just um, harvest them and then let them sit for a day or even a few hours. When you harvest your herbs, make sure they are immediately going into your freeze dryer so that the herb holds on to the most medicinal value and stays the freshest the longest. Then you simply put them in a mylar bag or in a jar or another bag with an oxygen absorber and they will last forever. One of the things I want to show you, uh, this is an older batch. Um, these are dehydrated um, and they are kind of grayish green in color where the freeze dried herbs keep their vibrancy. And so that's one of the telltale signs um, that they are keeping more medicinal value and more of those characteristic traits than the dehydrated ones. The dehydrated ones are still good, but if you're a serious herbalist and you just want that extra um, advantage, then really highly suggest the freeze dryer. Look for more freeze dryer videos coming up soon. Over the next few weeks, I'm gonna to try to show you all the things that we've been using it for. There is a link in the description of this video if you want to purchase one yourself. But if not, that's fine too. If you wanna learn more about drying herbs, I'm gonna make these videos not just about freeze drying, but about food preservation and herb preservation in general so that they still pertain to you even if you don't want to purchase one. But it is one of the most incredible tools I've gotten for my apothecary uh, as an herbalist who is consistently practicing herbalism. So if you are too, I highly recommend you check it out. All right guys, thanks for watching. Happy homesteading and have a great day.